everyone. So today, I, I expect this is not going to take more than an hour. It's one of our shorter trainings. Um, and we're going to talk about the ins and outs of a 4731 complaint. So we're talking consumers of the regional center and what do you do? When do you file a 4731 complaint versus when do you appeal? Um, we're going to you how to file it, why you would want to file a 4731 complaint, the difference between, again, a complaint and an appeal, a few tips and resources. little disclaimer, if you have a personal matter you want to discuss, it's best that you reach out to us. Um, and you can email us or you can call us. There's an 800 number that we're going to put in the chat. Um, and because we're recording, uh, whatever you put in the chat is recorded. So don't put any private information in the chat. Um, and like I said, call us if your matter entails more facts and, you know, um, where we might need to spend some time looking at the facts and so forth. Um, so Welfare and Institutions Code is the, it's the section of the statute um, where you're going to find all of the statutes that involve the Lanterman Act, the whole set of statutes that involve the regional center system, DDS, is all, you should think about the Landerman Act as an umbrella and then you have all of these statutes. So Welfare and Institutions Code, the acronym that you might see is WIC or WIC, Section 4731. So there is a section of the code, of the WIC code number 4731 that says that you can complain um, if your rights have been violated or denied. So examples of those is if you've gone to a, an, a hearing and you've won and the regional center doesn't want to implement the hearing, that would be uh, the basis for a complaint. If the regional center doesn't notify you of a change of a um, actually a service coordinator, um, it has to. Uh, notify you of a change and when it doesn't it's not it's it's the regional center has violated your rights and that's the subject of a 4731 complaint um if you've got services in your ipp that the regional center is not providing um that would be the subject of a 4731 complaint because the law says that the IPP is the contract and what's in the contract has to happen. And if, if the service or services are not being provided in that contract, then your rights have been violated. Um, and you might be thinking, oh my gosh, well, how, how do I know what my rights are? Well, by looking at the code sections, we have, um, and all those code sections are at, at the end of this presentation, there's a link to the Welfare and Institutions Code with all of the sections involving the Lanterman Act. Um, the other way to learn about your rights is to read our manual. We have a manual called Rights Under the Lanterman Act. Lots of information. It's set up in a question answer format and the answers will also cite to the law, the regulations, case laws, case necessary. Um, so that's how you're going to know what your rights are. Um, so section 4731A says that the consumer of the regional center can file a 4731 complaint or someone who's acting on behalf of the consumer. Why would you do it? Because you feel that your rights have been violated, um, or, uh, your rights have been improperly or unreasonably abused, punitively withheld or denied. Pretty much your rights have been violated in some way. Um, and this is the opportunity of the consumer to enforce his or her rights. And you can file a 4731 complaint against the regional center, against the state operated facilities, um, they're called developmental centers where some consumers reside 
or service providers, maybe a group home, a day program, a transportation service. You can file a consumer or someone acting on his, his or her behalf can file a 4731 complaint against a service provider. How do you do it? If you have to submit something in writing. Um, and the first step is going to be to write the, a letter or complaint to the director of the regional center. Uh, and you're going to tell the director what you're complaining about, um, who you're complaining. Well, you're going to be complaining about the regional center. Um, and if you're complaining about a, a developmental center, you're going to write the, a complaint to the director of the developmental center. Um, if it's a provider, you're going to send it to the director of the regional center. Um, and you can do it by email. You can do it. You can create your own letter. And DDS has a form that you can fill out um, that you can use. It's just a simple letter to the director. And I'm going to show you some samples. I'm going to show you the DDS complaint form. In our rights under the Lanterman Act, we have a, a sample complaint letter too. So what happens? Let's say that I, I, I file a 4731 complaint and I send it to the director of my regional center. The director is gonna have 20 days to do research and send me a written resolution. If I'm not satisfied with that resolution, I can then complain to the director of the Department of Developmental Services. The director is gonna have 45 days to issue a written decision and send me a copy. Um, and that's it. Um, we, a group of us had had a discussion about, well, what do you do when you are not happy with what the director has done or has missed a point um, in the past. They've pretty much, when we've gone back to them, um, to DDS about their response, it's like, this is final, we're not doing anything more. But you have two chances. You have a chance with the director, and if you're not satisfied, you have a chance with DDS. Now, if you don't file um, a complaint with the DDS director, then the proposed resolution is going to take effect on the 20th business day following receipt of the regional center director's um, written action. Um, you can't use 4731 complaints when you're disputing, uh, have disputes about services and supports. For example, you don't like the quality of the service. That's not what a, you know, the service is being performed, but you think it should be done differently. That's not a 4731 complaint. Uh, fee disputes or audit appeals. Those are other, there are other procedures for that, those types of things. Um, so let's talk about the difference between filing a 4731 complaint and an appeal. An appeal, and this is directly from 4731E, Section E, it says an appeal is for disputes regarding the nature, scope, or amount of services and supports that must be included in an IPP. It's also about um, denying, denial of eligibility or taking away regional center eligibility. So when we're taught, and the bottom part here really says it all. An appeal is when the regional, you have a dispute about services. You've requested a service and the regional center is denying that service. That's subject of an appeal. You had a service and the regional center wants to take it away. That would be the subject of an appeal. You, had a you have a service and the regional center wants to reduce uh, the service. That is for an appeal. You want to become eligible for regional center services and you're denied subject of an appeal. Um, you are a regional center consumer and the regional center um, sends you a notice telling you that they don't think they made a mistake when they found you eligible for, to become a regional center consumer and they want to take the eligibility away. Those, those are the issues for an appeal. 
The complaint is when your rights have been violated. Um, not about, you know, you've requested a service, it's been denied. It's not about reduction of service, taking away services. It, that's the subject for an appeal or eligibility, whether to become eligible or the regional centers taking away eligibility. Um, so the way to think about it is um, a complaint is when the regional center is breaking the law. Where is the law? It's in the Lanterman Act. How and how do I find out? You read. You read the Lanterman Act. You read our manual to know what your rights are or violates the regulation. And you'll have, and so you're going to find Find all of that information here. So if you want to see the Lanterman Act, you want to see all of the statutes that make up the Lanterman Act, you want to see the regulations that are you know, that um, implement the, 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 the statutes, they're all here in this in this link right here. And here you've got a you've got a link to our rights under the Lanterman Act manual, um, where you're gonna you're gonna learn a lot about your rights. Um, so um, this is the part of the training where I need you guys to be interactive and answer these. And, I, and we're going to, so I don't know, Lonnie or Raymond, if you guys want to check the chat to see what the answers are to each of these. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see how well you guys have listened to the presentation. Um, so let's start with the first one. Uh, what if the regional center does not provide a service in the IPP? Is that, are you going to file a 4731 complaint or are you going to appeal? And you can put your answer in chat. And Lonnie or Raymond, you can read the chat if you can just read the chat for me so I have an idea of what the answers sure. are. Um, looks like someone says appeal. Uh, someone says, I put A, I assume that stands for appeal. Someone says 4731. Okay. So this appeal. is a situation. Go ahead. Is there another one? Yeah. So uh, we have three appeals, if I'm assuming that A stands for appeal, and one says 4731. <laughs> okay. So here's a situation where the service is in the IPP, the IPP is the contract, and, this, and the regional center is not providing the service in the contract, and the law says your right is to receive the service that's in that contract, in that IPP. So this would be appropriate for a 4731 complaint. Here, the regional center is not denying a service, um, it's not saying we're not going to give you the service. It's just not giving it to you because it's in already it's already in your IPP. Um, and they may be telling you, oh, we don't have a vendor. Well, that's still a 4731 complaint because not having a vendor is not, not an excuse for not providing the service. Um, so this so the service is already there. They're not providing the service um, for whatever the reason is. And usually the reason is we can't find someone to provide the service. Um, and they have an obligation to find someone to provide the service. You have the right to have the service that's in your IPP. So this would be uh, appropriate for a 4731 complaint. Now, some of these though, you can do both. You can do a 4731 complaint and you can appeal. And as we go down the list, we might come across one of those, one or two of those. Um, let's go to the next one. So the regional center says that there is no provider available to provide a service in your IPP. Is that, are you gonna file a 4731 complaint or are you going to appeal? Ask again. So, we have Raymond. forty-seven thirty-one. We have two forty-seven thirty-ones. Okay. 
Don't be shy. Be brave. <laughs> it's okay. Uh-huh. And one says appeal. Uh, could we repeat the question, please? Sure. The regional center says there's no provider available to provide a service in your IPP. So we have so far five for 4731 and one for appeal. Okay. And the answer is it's very much like the first one. This would be appropriate for a 4731 complaint because they're not giving you the service that's in your IPP. And here the reason is, is that there's no uh, provider available. You have a right to have that service and your right is being violated when the regional center gives you an excuse like this for not providing the service in your IPP. So let's go to the next one. You want 40 hours of respite per month and the regional center offers 20 hours per month. Is this um, the subject of, of an appeal or a 4731 complaint? Appeal, appeal, 4731, appeal. So more appeals than 4731. Okay. So this is a this is a situation where you have asked for 40 hours of respite and they've denied that. They've given they're offering you 20, but they've denied your request for 40 hours of respite. So this is an appropriate appeal issue because it's a denial of service. Even though they gave you half of what you wanted, they still denied the 40 hours that you were asking for. Now, let me add something to this hypothetical. What if the service coordinator tells me, Maria, we're not going to give you the 40 hours of respite, um, we're, we're gonna, but we're willing to give you 20, and I never get a notice of action? Is that not getting a notice of action, is that a 4731 complaint or can I appeal that too, that I didn't get a notice of action? Let me give you a hint. The law says that when services are denied, the regional center has to provide you with a written notice of action containing inf important information, including your rights to appeal. So that's what the law says. And here in this situation, the regional center, the service coordinator told me what they were going to do, but never sent me a notice. What do I do? How can I, what can I do about not having ever received the notice? Can I file a 4731 complaint or can I appeal that too? We have two for each. Okay. So that would be a 4731 complaint because it's a violation of my right to receive a notice of action when uh, services have been denied. So, in the, so adding not getting a notice of action uh, to this hypothetical, I'm going to file an appeal on the denial of my 40 hours, and I'm going to file a 4731 complaint on uh, the denial of a notice of action, a written notice of action, because the law says that I'm entitled to a written notice of action when services I've requested have been denied. It doesn't matter that they offered 20 hours, my 40 hours of respite, my request was denied. Um, so let's go on to the next one. Respite hours are 40 per month and they're reduced to 10 hours per month. Is that an appeal or is that for a 4731 complaint that my hours, respite hours are 40, but they were reduced to 10? We have three says 4731. Okay. Um, so someone says this both. Is how many? Someone says both. Okay. Uh, so here I have hours that are being reduced. 
when services are being reduced, that is the subject of an appeal. So when, when I request services and they're denied, that's an appeal. When I have services and they're reduced, that's an appeal. Uh, or when I have services and they're taken away, that's an appeal. So it's this is the subject of an appeal. And if I never got a notice about this change in my in my respite hours, then I can do a 4731 complaint on the fact that I didn't get a written notice because I'm my right. I have a right to receive a, a written notice. Um, so let's go to the next one. The regional center refuses to implement a hearing decision. Appeal, I already, I already appealed the issue and I won the hearing. And now there's a decision from the administrative law judge saying, regional center, you have to give Maria this. And regional center is refusing to give me that. Um, is that an appeal or a 4731 complaint? So far, I'm seeing 4731. That's right. It's a 4731 complaint because my I have a right to have that hearing decision implemented. I won that hearing. And that the regional center is refusing to implement that is a 4731 complaint. So let's go to the next one. You requested an IPP meeting and the regional center holds the meeting three months after your request. Let me just tell you what the law says. The law says that when you request an IPP, it has to be held within 30 days. So here, yeah, I requested an IPP meeting, but the regional center held it three months after my request, not 30 days as the law says. So is this a 4731 complaint issue or an appeal issue? I'm seeing 4731. Let me know if you see anything else, Raymond. More 4731s. Okay. Yes, it's a 4731 complaint because the law says, if you look on our in our RULA, if you look at the statutes, it says that whenever anyone asks for an IPP meeting, it must be held within 30 days. And here the regional center took three months to, to hold that IPP meeting. Despite the fact that we had that IPP meeting three months after my request, I can still file a 4731 complaint because it violated my rights. What is my right? My right is to have an IPP meeting within 30 days of my request. That's what the law says. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The regional center offers you a day program, um, but you don't want a day program. You want a personalized day program or what they call tailored day program. Is this the subject of an appeal or a 4731 complaint? I'm seeing three for appeal. For appeal. Let me know if you see anything else. More appeal. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked for a tailored day program they're offering me a day program, which is not the same. Um, so they've denied my, my request for a personalized day program. That is the subject for an appeal. The fact that they're offering me something else doesn't mean that they've agreed to, to what I've asked for. They're giving me something that I didn't ask for. I asked for per, a tailored day program or personalized and they're giving me something else. They've denied my request for my service. Okay, so let's go to the next one. You, you're told that your budget for social recreation is $100 per month and that anything over $100 per month is your responsibility. Is this the subject? Now, for this, you kind of have to know what the law says, right? About social recreation. And I can tell you that the law says about social recreation that the regional center cannot impose limits like these. 
So with that knowledge, um, and you would find that in our RULA manual, you would find that in the statutes, maybe you would learn about the, you know, social right from other sources, but regional centers can't impose these kinds of limits, like 100 per month, or you can only have one, one uh, social rec activity at a time, um, or if you want social rec, we're going to take away your rest, but can't do any of that. They were doing that, but there were directives that came out letting the regional centers know, you know, you can't do that, you can't do that. So, but this regional center saying, hey, you want, Maria, you want a social rec activity? It's limited to 100, per, uh, 100 a month. Anything else is, is and, let's, and let's say that I, um, and let's add to this. So let's make it a little harder. And let's say that I asked for three social rec activities. Um, I asked for swimming, I asked for yoga, and I asked for horse, horseback therapy. So I asked for three things, and those three things are going to cost about $500 a month. Yet the regional center saying to me, you only have $100 a month, and sayonara, good luck. So is this the subject of a 34th, 47th, what the regional center has done to me, said to me, I've asked for three services, and they're saying, you can only have, uh, you, you can only have $100 you can only spend $100 a month. Subject of 4731 complaint and or an appeal. So let's see. It's a little tricky. So far, all the response so far says appeal. And the appeal is because I asked for 4731. Because they're denying some of your services. No, no, so no, you're forty-seven thirty-one. Uh huh. You're all right. In fact, in the scenario that I gave you, you can do both. Where is the forty-seven thirty-one complaint? Because the regional center is violating the laws on social recreation by imposing a hundred dollar limit per month. Remember, I said to you, there is regional centers. The law says regional centers cannot impose these kinds of limits. So this regional center is doing that. So it's violating my right to social rec because the law says they can't do this. They can't put a, a limit on a, a dollar limit on social rec. Um, but remember, I asked for three, for three services. So essentially, this response in saying to me, $100 a month is all you get, for your three services is essentially denying the services I've asked for, right? So here you could do, based on what I added to this hypothetical, you could do both an appeal and a 4731 complaint. The 4731 complaint would be for the, the violation of the law where the regional center is imposing a dollar limit. Um, and the appeal is because I asked for three social rec services and they've essentially denied them. Um, you know, at the very least, they've, they've denied two of them because, you know, maybe that one, that third one, I may be able to get it in under 100. But essentially what they've done is denied the services. So you could do both. So let's go to the next one. This regional center does not issue a notice of action before terminating your personal assistance services. Appeal or 4731 complaint? <clears throat> or both? Remember, sometimes it could be both like we saw in, in the prior hypothetical. I'm seeing 4731. Um, could we repeat the question one more time? Sure. The regional center does not issue a notice of action before it terminates your personal assistance services. So there's no notice of action when the law says, regional center, when you are terminating services, you have to issue a notice of action. 
and they're terminating your personal assistance services. So they're terminating a service. Can we do here a 4731 complaint, an appeal, or both? I'm seeing a lot of 4731 and one response as both. Oh, two responses both. Yeah, you can do both. So where is the 4731 complaint? The four, in not issuing you the notice of action, you have the right to receive a written notice of action when your services are being terminated and the regional center violated your right by not issuing you the notice of action. The appeal is for terminating your services. Remember, denying services, terminating services, reducing services, appeal. If you just remember those three things for appeal, you're way ahead of the game. And then the other two for appeal are denial of, re of regional center eligibility or when the regional center wants to take away your eligibility because that has happened. Um, so those are the five events for an appeal. Violation of your rights. We have many under the Lanterman Act, um, 4731 complaint. So we're gonna go to a sample uh, that we have in our rights under the Lanterman Act manual of a um, 4731 complaint. I need to um, get out of here and then go to that. So if we go to that link, you're going to see supplement. Oh, this is in Spanish. This is okay. We're going to change it to English. Here we go. Okay. So we have here supplement. So we have our rights under the Lanterman Act manual and chapters, and then we have supplements attached to the chapters. How to file a 4731 complaint. Um, and it says here, fill out a form in English. So this is the DDS form that we're going to see in a moment, because you can use the form that DDS provides. But we have a sample here. You can use this as a guide. Today's date. Uh, the name of the executive director of your regional center and the address of the regional center, dear director. This is a Welfare Institutions Code Section 4731 complaint about a pattern in practice that violates uh, the rights under the Lanterman Act. This complaint is on behalf of, you know, maybe me, Maria Iriarte, as the consumer, um, or it could also be you could file a group 4731 complaint if if a number of consumers are are there the same rights are being violated you could file a group 4731 complaints on behalf of the consumers who are similarly situated so in the case where the regional center was imposing a dollar limit of $100 for social rec a month it's a policy it's in their it's, it's a policy that the regional center is carrying out for all the consumers, then that could be the subject of a, of a group 4731 complaint because the regional center in imposing that limit is violating the, violating the rights of all the regional center consumers for that regional center. Um, and so say that you're writing on behalf of the person with a disability, describe the services and supports that you, you, you can, or it's just uh, added information, not really necessary. I, and then you indicate what the problem is. Um, let's say that the regional center, uh, this, what, this one has to do with the regional center not uh, providing you with an IPP in your native language. Um, and so uh, you would just write, you know, that that was the violation and explain what you want, how you want it to be resolved. Um, and of course, here, you know, you've, you've obviously you need to know what right was violated. Right. And that's how are you going to do that? You're going to look at our manual. You're going to look at the statutes and the regulations. And that's how you're going to know, because they tell you what your rights are. Um, you know, uh, and that's how you're going to know whether your rights have been violated. 
Um, but I want to actually take you, I think the form the DDS has is actually uh, really easy to use, easier, easier than the one we just saw, actually. So this is the one that you can get online. You can submit it online. Um, it says here, a consumer or any representative acting on behalf of a consumer or consumers may file a 47-131 complaint against the regional center, developmental center, or service provider. This form is voluntary and may be used as guidance in writing your complaint letter. So you can take the information here and write your own letter. But it's so easy, right? Name of the person filing the complaint, relation to the consumer, identifying information. Uh, what's the regional center or developmental center that you're complaining about? And then it's super easy. Statement of the facts which you allege, uh, upon which you allege your rights have been violated, right? Um, the example I requested an IPP meeting on May 22nd, 2024, and the regional center <coughs> um, called an IPP meeting on, on July 30th of 2024. That's way past the 30 days that they have to call an IPP meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what you would put down here. And let's say that, uh, you know, you've already had that IPP meeting in July. What would be your proposed resolution? The proposed resolution, for, in my mind, would be to, you know, to notify the, re to, you know, to make sure that the regional center understands their obligations to uh, provide an IPP meeting within 30 days as per, you know, the statute, um, and that, um, you know, the next time that I ask for an IPP meeting that the regional center hold it within the time allowed under the law, which is 30 days. Um, it, and I might even add a resolution if for some reason the, deny, the delay caused me to have maybe out of pocket expenses that could have been covered through the regional center if time hadn't gone by. It just depends on what happened in between the time I called. I asked for the IPP meeting and the time that I finally had the IPP meeting. You sign it, you date it, and you can submit it. So that is easy, easy, easy to do. Um, so this is the um, sample uh, in our manual and the DDS form is there. This is, here's the DDS form in English. 4731 complaint in the Spanish. So really important, really simple is understanding the difference of when you can appeal and what is when you can file a 4731 complaint. Remember, appeal, denial of service, terminating service, reduction of service, denial of eligibility, terminating eligibility. That's for an appeal. Um, and just when you're writing an appeal, you know, a 4731 complaint or even an appeal, just be clear and concise. Um, get to the point. Uh, make sure you include what it is you want from your complaint. And resources we have um, DDS or a, a link to DDS's consumer rights appeals and complaints. Um, you can always complain to the DDS office of the ombudsman and there's information there. You can always work with our sister organization, the Office of Client Rights Advocacy, or you can contact us. And you, you can open these links and, and get to that information. The Welfare and Institutions Code 4731 section is right here. And these are the links to different chapters in our RULA. Um, so chapter 10 talks about um, 4731 complaints in our rights under the Lanterman Act manual. So we've come to the end of the presentation. Like I said, this was gonna be uh, short. I didn't say sweet, but short. Um, and I hope that you guys have come away with a better understanding of filing a 4731 complaint, when you would file a 4731 complaint, the difference between that and an appeal, what, the, what issues are good for an appeal versus what issues are good for a 4731 complaint and understand that it's really easy to fill out that, you know, 
The form is easy. You don't have to use any particular form as long as the information is there. You're going to, you know, your first uh, uh, appeal will be, or your first complaint will be to the director of the regional center. If you're not happy with the response from the director of the regional center, you're going to go to DDS and you're going to file a complaint with the director of DDS. Um, so I'm happy to take questions, clarify things. Okay, let's me stop the recording real quick. One moment.